The most common cause of insomnia is elevated body temperature. So they're too hot. And one of the most common causes of being too hot is hyperglycemia. Most people don't appreciate that when your blood glucose levels spike, you, you activate your sympathetic nervous system. And of all the times of the day when your sympathetic nervous system is activated, you don't want it to be turned on when you're trying to go to bed. That's when you want the parasympathetic to dominate. So when someone eats that evening snack of spiking their blood sugar, then they go to bed in a hyperglycemic state, they're going to have all of the signs and symptoms of anxiety. They're going to be laying there hot. Their heart is going to be beating hard and fast. And they're, they're going to feel that pulse pounding and wonder, what am I anxious about? Why can't I just sleep? Well, it's not because you have anxiety. It's because you went to bed hyperglycemic. But unfortunately, that is the one time of day where people are at their weakest. And I'm very sympathetic to that because I feel the same thing. People can walk past treats and junk food all day and, and, and deny themselves that, knowing that it's not good for them. But the moment 6 o'clock comes around or 7 o'clock then all of a sudden the temptation starts to take on a new form and they can't, they indulge. And that is the worst time. It would be better for them to indulge in that at lunch, for example, than it would be at that point of the day, not only metabolically and in maintaining good insulin sensitivity, but not to mention sleep. And then the compounding consequences of poor sleep just creates this vicious cycle where there are, there's so many decades worth of evidence showing that as much as we had that one study suggesting, well, the insulin, higher insulin group didn't had less hunger. Yeah. There's a lot of evidence showing the opposite. So where you, you end up creating this roller coaster of glycemia and hunger where the person eats a starchy sugary breakfast, which let's face it, most breakfasts are these days, they have this big spike. And then when you go high, you inevitably go low. And then when you go low, hunger comes again, even though you may still literally have food in your stomach and yet your brain is starting to sense, well, I'm hungry because the overall amount of energy in the blood has gone down, even though there's plenty of stuff still in the stomach, but it stimulates hunger. That's David Ludwig's main contributions. So anyway, it puts the person on this roller coaster of glycemia and every time it comes down, hunger wants to push it back up again. And so, yeah, I, I cut you off though, but that puts them in a position to eat six or seven times a day. And if they're not eating, they're drinking something sugary, either a soda or a sugary fruit juice. Um, but there is an, a group uh, that found that when you have a breakfast and they looked at breakfast and the name of the article was something like a more rapid return of hunger. They said it was something like return to hunger was in the title. And if the breakfast isocaloric breakfast, so same number of calories, protein was clamped and it just differed in the ratio of fats to carbs. The high carb group was hungrier much sooner and then ate more for their next meal than the low carb group. And, and so I would say as much as we want to be sort of fair with whole plants, if that breakfast is a mix of whole plants with good proteins and fats, that's going to be a winning combination of satiety uh, where I, when I've worn CGMs, I absolutely see that the single most predictive variable of my glycemia in any given day is how did I sleep? I, I, nothing and I, that I've played around with, nothing has even come close. So when you get one bad night of sleep, the stress home, so it fits under the stress category to put a, to make it uh, very succinct. So of the three primary causes of quick insulin resistance, it's stress when it comes to sleep deprivation. One bad night of sleep will result in a much higher and disrupted rhythm of cortisol. And, and so cortisol is, will cause insulin resistance in every biological model very quickly. So too will epinephrine. And epinephrine is another stress hormone, sort of the faster stress hormone, the cortisol being a little more delayed. But both of them are higher um, with regards to sleep deprivation. And even, even epinephrine, even adrenaline can cause insulin resistance in humans. If you do a steady little drip in a human of adrenaline, they're going to be insulin resistant, with, demonstrably insulin resistant within just an hour or two. To make, so that's how sleep deprivation causes uh, insulin resistance. And to make matters even worse, what is the most common intervention to try to offset the negative consequences of sleep deprivation? Well, it's more caffeine. Well, more caffeine is going to increase epinephrine even more. Epinephrine causes insulin resistance. So even the solution to the sleep deprivation ends up inadvertently compounding the metabolic consequences of the sleep deprivation. Now, that's not to say epinephrine, uh, it's not to say caffeine doesn't have some metabolic benefits. It can when used correctly, like I would say when used in the context of performance. 
But for someone who's trying to offset the consequences of their sleep deprivation, you may have some increased alertness, yes, but the metabolic consequences of the sleep have now just been added on.